Right, air yeah, conditioning parts finally arrived. Well, finally, it only took a week. <coughs> there you go. Right, quick explanation again. Nice. Pretty wide loom, which is pretty good. Here's the billet control knobs. Three speed fan, pretty obvious. Temperature, which is actually relevant to warm modes. Um, defrost or not, you can have a warm or a cold defrost, depending on which way you want to look at it. Um, the mode button or the mode selector this is, works in a different manner. It has basically one uh, servo control motor which operates a flat between the front and rear vents. So, with this, if you clock it all the way to the right, and obviously you can still select warm or cold for that, but if you cut that and right, we're now in full AC mode, and basically this will dish out cold air on the forefront vents. Now, you can see on the back vents here, that's here, you can have kind of heat dumps or cool dumps on the front as well to go directly to the floor. So have an event, just have an open thing, that's okay if you want it, but I'm not too fussed. So these four will be routed to various vents inside the front of the dash. And um, <coughs> that turns the AC on by rotating it all the way to that way. Now if you rotate it this way, once you go past 50% or past vertical, it will start to open it towards the towards the windscreen. Now, I use these as a heat dump to the floor, so we have a windscreen and floor heat at the same time. Uh, we'll see. Um, but these will play will be ducted to an already fabricated uh, vent system in the dash. Now if you go like pretty much horizontal then you've got heat going to the dash or going to the windscreen. Now if you click all the way the last bit is a click then it will also turn the AC on. Now so technically we've probably got that wound all the way up there to try and get the windscreen nice and warm and defrosted. But if you turn the mode all the way to that size, then technically it also turns the air conditioning on. And so you basically have a dehumidified defrost. So as well as a heated screen, I've got a dehumidified defrost. That windscreen is nowhere ever going to freeze or freeze up. So, <coughs> so that's a dehumidified defrost, normal heat from the bottom, you can blend it 50-50 or you can have it purely to the face vents. So that's the billet control knob, but also if you look, I think the grub screws are removable, so uh, for British SVA I'll have to do some different uh, uh, different control knobs to blend that out and maybe have to put some bars across here, a bit like you see the new Mini does, so that the, uh, um, the knob can become SVA compliant. Obviously it all depends where you put them as well, but I'm going to be in the centre of the dash, so you probably need to play with that. <coughs> okay, that's the, those. Um, here's your solenoid. It looks very similar to the standard kind of mechanical one. In fact, it still has the kind of screw in the indent there where the cable used to go. But now, obviously, it's uh, server controlled, so you have a multi-pin plug, just about to see there, um, <coughs> that server controls the heat, which is what our dial on the oh, there is for. So, server control heater valve comes with the kit. There you go. Uh, next difference um, where the condenser goes and how the condenser fan, um, stroke rad fan, will work. Now, normally the dryers, um, which are on the standard, or were on my last GTR, should we say, um, uh, that car, <coughs> um, were what's called a binary switch. Uh, now, what it means by that, it has two, it has an on uh, and an off point <coughs> in, in two places. So, if you can imagine a pressure gauge, um, the center of the pressure gauge is it runs. If the pressure goes too low, click, the switch clicks out. Um, and the being too low would probably be lack of refrigerant. <coughs> if the pressure gauge then goes too high, that could be um, air in the system. So basically, what you're talking about is a high discharge pressure from uh, high discharge pressure from the, from the uh, compressor. So a brand new sound under the poly V pump. <coughs> so you've got basically one switch point, two switch points. So basically, the switch allows the AC to work within a band of pressure. If it's too low or too high, it won't work. That's how the standard system 
used to work and basically if the AC was on it would automatically turn the, the, uh, the fan on which would be located in the back corner here <coughs> but what normal cars have or what most cars have because they have a lot more efficient airflow over the condenser you have what's called a trinary switch so you have a, an, an off point between your, between your bands or an on point between your bands but then as the temperature as the uh, discharge pressure creeps up and gets closer to the um, off point for the uh, compressor which basically means you know the system is getting too hot <coughs> so basically somewhere around here somewhere around the middle you'll have a third switch or a second switch that will come on so a second cable will go live which basically means it's calling for the fan on and the fan will cool the uh, the refrigerator down and the pressure will reduce again so this is a trinary switch so it basically has two switch outputs um, so it'll switch the fan as well as the, uh, the system on and off or as well as, as the safety switch technically for the, for the compressor so that's a trinary switch that fits on top of the dryer pretty similar to uh, most other systems now <coughs> here's our condenser now most normal cars because obviously the size of the radiator I've got, I've got plenty of cooling capacity at the front so now I'm using a large condenser and this is obviously quite a bit bigger, it's over 2 feet long and it's about 13 inches tall <coughs> now this will go in front of the radiator, it's hard to hold the camera back this will go in front of the radiator like so and the pipes will be routed back to, back to the cabin <coughs> um, I've got a quick look at the pipe routing and technically because you run the two la large pipes from the evaporator at present to the back of the car it doesn't make a huge amount of difference uh, to routing this to the front so um, there'll be a tiny amount of extra weight in the piping but that'll be about it but the condenser would be way more efficient now <coughs> um, running that can based um, uh, wiring system <coughs> I can run an output from the ECU for the radiator fans uh, for temperature to, to run to that uh, um, input unit which will then operate the radiator fans at the front but also the trinary switch I can put an output to the same unit and have a logic program in there which will basically turn the radiator fans on so I'll have just the two ordinary radiator fans um, <coughs> which are obviously a lot bigger capacity it'll turn one of the fans on for the air conditioning condenser so even if the engine doesn't need it it might turn one of the radiator fans on to, to cool the condenser down so I'll just have two rad fans, I won't have a third fan in the back just purely for that and that will be permanently or would, would normally be permanently running whenever we have the AC on well these will actually cycle in and out and that trinary switch will actually turn them on and off when it needs it or not when it doesn't need it they'll be off <coughs> so this is pretty much how normal cars work um, it's a bigger condenser, bigger radiator no need for an individual fan. I can control both the radiator, both the radiator fans via the engine, or via the air conditioning, depending on which needs it first. So <coughs> that's the difference on that. Uh, getting back to this, the actual evaporator itself. It's actually a lovely spout, um, high output, uh, <coughs> high output fan on this uh, unit itself, which is great. And go through both of these obviously heater coils. Uh, it's the larger of the two, so this will be the suction return. That's the uh, uh, liquid feed in. There's your expansion valve. There's your your anti frost valve to stop the uh, block of ice forming in here. If it gets too cold, then it'll it'll also turn the system off. Uh, just to make sure that <coughs> you're not going to get a block of ice and get your feet. Or the little, obviously block of ice will just freeze it up and you won't get anything. So no airflow. So it has to have an anti frost valve. Uh, oh, that's kind of about it. How's these removable? So technically, you've got four of these outlets front, four of these back. Um, whether I route two or three of these to the to the dash and I just put one heat dump to the floor, I don't know. Um, but the four at the front, now I'd like to try and set this system as far back as possible, close to the windscreen. And um, they're obviously not too close; it's going to touch the uh, um, windscreen wiper unit. And then I can mount two of those units direct to the centre of the dashboard and then run one either side and run down by the dash and actually have it sort of corner vents so <coughs> uh, idea being would be one two vents in the middle and then maybe an event either side as well 
Um, the system does come with some um, various vents, but uh, you know, I really don't know at this point exactly what I'm going to use. So I just, just got the standard stuff. You have to have a kit, so that's the standard defrost thing. It's probably fine for some stuff, but I can't see. It. <coughs> I can't see of any particular use. Oh, I might be using something. And then I've got a standard underdash. This is standard underdash little uh, ball vent. But yeah, again, whether I use them or not, or whether I use a, you know, run with the rest of the crowd, run a couple of Audis, or thing, I don't know yet. We shall, we shall have to see. But um, you know, I could paint them under the dash if I wanted to, I suppose. But ah, probably not. <coughs> But it's cheaper to buy the complete kit. Obviously, kit comes with just about everything. Oh, there's another. There's another heat dump shoe. I haven't looked at that one. <laughs> Excuse me for a second. Mm hmm. Okay, here's another kind of a remote heat dump. Uh, you can pull the tube there and have that. Wow. With no idea where. From the bulkhead by your feet. Whatever. It's but I say it's best to buy the kit. Uh, and the kit pretty much comes with all the piping, some venting, um, all the various clips and drain and screws. Uh, the condenser, which obviously you specify, you specify what size you want. Sander compressor, which obviously you specify you want poly V or you want old ordinary fan belt. Then uh, a bracket kit, which is going to be pretty useless for me. This is probably going to be mounted very down low. Maybe we can have a kit for that. So, yeah, again, if you buy the whole kit, then it just so it comes with it. Billet controls, the condenser, the evaporator. Oh, and in here, actually think about it. In here should be a little uncrimped piping. Uh, here you go. Fittings galore. Now, as a as a kit for me, this is perfect. I can mount all the pipes in. Oh, that's some nice peak clips. Some more this thing, and then three or four bits of pipe. There's, I have no idea what that is, but there you go. <coughs> for me, this is perfect. But as a oh, oh there's all your fitting uh, fitting O-rings. And let go with the inside there. For me, this is fine. I can sort out what pipe and I want, the lengths, cut the tubes, uh, cut the uh, pipes to length, and then I'll get them crimped up. As far as supplying a kit to somebody else, they want me to have a, a pre crimped set of pipes and send the AC system with the car, then I can buy the system, make, the, make all the brackets and fittings and whatever else. And the radiator will obviously have the brackets already welded on for the uh, for the condenser <coughs> the brackets to mount this will pretty much probably already be on the chassis it's kind of looks like it's bolted at the back here by two brackets but we shall yes, we'll see oh, that seems to be with it oh, well, <coughs> we'll obviously have to mount some form of plate there for that but I shall pre crimp all the fittings get all the pipes right and get the orientations of the you know, the uh, hoses correct and one thing I hated with uh, uh, GTR Simon's car was when I tried to connect the hoses at the evaporator and then at the back uh, by the compressor the orientation of the 90 degree fitting was completely wrong and unfortunately the other end wasn't a dead straight fitting so I couldn't just spin the fitting that end to get the other end right so it's important if you get a hose that's got a 45 or a 90 and a 90 or whatever on the other end if one end's not straight that you get the orientation of the two fittings correct, otherwise it's just a worse and bloody nightmare and it looks horrid and it doesn't work properly, so <coughs> that I hate it, it's one thing that's one. Another peeve. So that's the unit. Yes, it's quite a bit taller, it'll obviously be sat that way. Um, I can duct air to the fan. Mm, there we go. So I can duct a sort of suction for it, suction pipe and mount that there, so I maybe have a um, you know, the option to having internal or external air supply to it so there'll be as much as having all these here there's also going to be a uh, internal external air supply as well so 
now that one is <laughs> to be finalized but yeah I want to try and drag some air from basically from in this corner here um, and ducted into ducted into the dash put a U trap and a water trap in it but basically it'll be ducted into the dash now back on the front clip we've been playing again yesterday a little bit not much but so back to this radius again it is too tight I don't like it um, but going through and pulling the radius like this so the top of the wheel arch is looking a little bit flatter more comparison to the back of the car and to here and to there um, I like that I like this and we yet again played with our outer headlamp shape um, and I'm quite happy with it still having instead of the old headlamp following that line because the line kind of we didn't really have any definition to be honest it's quite smooth and spooping but no real purpose to it um, I can still drag the headlamp into this edge here and it would still be away basically what will be roughly the apex of that and it still doesn't look too bad That's one, my one worry is that I have to take this line here and bring it out square so it kind of follows that line down there but it doesn't look too bad just as it is still doing the original style kind of like that so <coughs> so it's pretty good so we can play with that but uh, two boxes of clay and I'm going to start doing the dashboard yet again so the dashboard will lift it up probably inch and a half maybe even two inches you look where the the eye position is even with the dashboard raising up you still end up getting to see the quite a lot of the front of the car so um, no real need for it doesn't obscure your driving position you'd have to be four foot eight to actually obscure anything to be honest <coughs> um, so this can be raised up a little bit on this particular left hand drive version then technically the <coughs> the heater motor sits down and below because you can see the um, the unit here technically level is there so which is good because the lowest side will be on the driver's side sorry passenger side for a left hand drive car now <coughs> that's fine for us and for basically 95 percent of the world for uk what i'm going to have to do and it's doable i spoke to the guys at the factory and they said it's not a problem we'll basically turn the system around <coughs> sounds simple but what it does mean is that this uh, uh, server control unit is actually in reverse now um, so to get your knobs right and to get everything else right <coughs> what you can do and obviously to get the um, to get the defrost part working or dehumid defrost work part working properly this has to be reversed now it can be done they've got to supply me a uh, a specific or a, a different uh, server unit there uh, and the switch would be moved I'd basically reverse this you see this little cam here that operates a micro switch that cam would have to be reversed but they they will do me a, a special off for that for a right hand drive car it's probably about another 150 bucks but it then does put the thing in reverse and now this totally the lowest point now will be on the passenger side for, for the left hand drive car, for a right hand drive car, so um, it means the piping goes down the other side. So, right hand drive cars would have um, maybe even move the compressor to the other side of the engine, um, <coughs> make the piping shorter. Uh, I don't know, we shall, we shall see on that one. The first right hand, custom, right -hand drive customer car, and um, then I'll make some alterations in, in that one and alter spec so, so everything's correct. <coughs> um, I could even possibly flip the uh, condenser on the front of the car so the, so the pipe's running out this way and with everything that they might run out the other way so um, that's a good that so left and right hand drive still possible and the passenger is going to lose a couple of inches but if you remember right your knees are roughly where the dashboard's kind of here anyway um, so your knees are tapering down but it just doesn't get in, in the way of the driver's feet which is the best bit and passengers are just ballast so you know forget it <coughs> It's the driver's experience we're, we're trying to aim for here. Um, and to be honest, he doesn't use a huge amount. Uh, and this particular car, for me, like I said before, I've got uh, another inch in height. So technically, I could come down an inch below the, this dash tube here, and it wouldn't affect any more difference to a standard, uh, standard chassis. Um, standard GTR, then yeah, okay, that's fine. It's going to 
is a little bit more but the, the dash unit is, is going to be back here somewhere so it's not going to be above the pedals so it won't be a problem for your feet it'll just be a little bit lower than having it stock um, so you'll obviously have to IV, IVA compliant make sure everything's curved but it's not really going to be a problem and even if there is a actually look at it that way around that's the back oh that is the back yeah. if we look at that around I can't see there being any IVA any complaint with everything's quite rounded off anyway so not going to be a problem I might have to route that right hand drive different end yeah that's not a problem I can, I can swap that out as well <coughs> So yeah, that's the that's the little beauty, all servo controlled and you know better hopefully. Yes, probably a little heavier, but you know real sod it if the air conditioning actually works really, really nicely. You can freeze your proverbials off and defrost the screen with a Q dehumidifier as well. So if you didn't have a heated screen it didn't, didn't really matter. And all the parts in the one box. So. Christmas come again. <coughs> okay, um, I'll probably post another video when I start mounting it in there and uh, we start roughing out the outer dashboard shape. Um, I am going to try and do a kind of a three piece dash, um, mainly to make it simple. Uh, <coughs> excuse my tacky clock, <coughs> it's, it revs up every hour. Um, I'm going to make a three piece dashboard, basically, we'll make a, a a similar kind of um, non-specific left or right hand drive piece to go over. It will be crowned because the flat looks awful. It always looks dished so it will, it will have at least a half an inch crown in it. Um, and then we'll have a centre console which I may or may not make tilted towards the driver. I don't know yet. I can see me the easy route just having it um, basically flat so it can also be used for left and right hand drive and then I'll make the binnacle piece for the dashboard itself um, yet yeah, again so I can make the binnacle piece move from left and right for whichever left or right hand drive um, so we'll see how it goes but I have must admit I do like the idea of pulling the centre console slightly towards the passenger and having it bevelled so that it's more angled towards the driver in which case I will have to have uh, two moulds for the uh, centre console piece but I can't see that being a huge issue. It's not. It's all going to be covered anyway. It's not. It doesn't have to be, have a fantastic finish, which basically makes the process a lot easier in making. I can pretty much do it in clay and without spraying it. I can uh, just fire some shellac at it and uh, smooth it over and just make a mould off of that. Because it'll always pretty much be covered in alcantara or leather or, <coughs> or whatever. So, okay, that's been long enough. <coughs> Sorry for boring you to death. Um, hopefully a few <laughs> might have been interested.